Hello accounting superstars, this is Professor Don Bush from the Accounting Superstar channel. I've been a professor for about 30 years and a CPA for about that long and I've got great ways to explain accounting so you came to the right place. So today's lesson is the profit margin on sales. Really easy, it's something very basic, it's something that everybody in business, finance, accounting, just general business ought to know. And all it is, is we're just trying to figure out for every dollar of sales that we make, how much profit are we making? Now we might be losing money too, so it might be a net loss here. But that's all we're doing. We're just comparing the sales with the net income. So um, for every $1 sales, how much net income do we get? And this varies a lot between businesses. Some businesses make a lot of uh, net income on sales and some businesses very little. By the way, uh, the net income is the bottom line number, the, the very, very bottom line number on the income statement. And I know every textbook teaches uh, about it in every class you, you learn about it. And... Um, but I'm just speaking for me personally. I personally don't care for it that much. And uh, one of the big reasons for that is, is I'm more interested in how the business is doing, earning money from doing their work, from doing their job, from fulfilling their purpose. And I can find that number much easier, much better on um, net income from operations. Uh, and so this lesson's not about that. It's not about net income from operations. It's about uh, the net, the bottom line net income divided by sales. Now, one thing that you need to know, and this is really advanced here, and, and I'll just keep it very simple, but it's a, a very advanced. And you probably won't learn about it much uh, if you're an accounting student until you get into uh, advanced accounting. And uh, in the basic accounting classes, you probably won't learn about it at all. But what, the, what happens is, is some items that should go on the income statement are uh, do an end run uh, around the income statement. Uh, an end run, like in football, you know, you've got your defensive line and the offense tries to run around the end of the uh, line. And, um, and so what I mean by that is that there are some very important numbers that don't show up on the income statement. And in my opinion, I think they should. And, and I don't know why the accounting profession decided to have certain items and run around the uh, income statement. Well, I do know why. One reason is, is uh, to um, reduce volatility. But I think that's a horrible bad reason. Uh, and a big reason for that is, you might, and you might be wondering, well, why is, why is Professor Bush here getting so worked up about this? Well, what it is, is that um, by agreement, uh, the accounting profession has decided, well, we won't show some things on the income statement. And a really big one is, is uh, gains and losses from uh, projected uh, pen pension benefit obligations. And you might say, what the heck is that? And why do I care? Well, uh, pensions are really, really big things and they're very expensive things. And uh, if they're not showing up on the income statement, they're, they're kind of hidden. And a lot of people say, well, no, they're not hidden. They're show, showing up on the, um, you know, in retained earnings. But how many people know this? How many people know the connection? Not very many. And there's some other things too, like uh, gains and losses on uh, available for sale, securities and uh, gains and losses on foreign currency translations too. So the, these are very advanced topics, but I just want you to know that this bottom line net income uh, number, it's not as pristine as you would hope, as you would think. So uh, so I, I'm not a big fan of this ratio, but since every textbook teaches it, every pro accounting professor teaches it, I teach it too. But I, I always tell the students, uh, I don't care for it that much. I'd rather look at... Um, uh, net income from operations divided by sales. So anyways, here's the formula, folks. So after, uh, now that I can get down from my soapbox here. So this is the Sunset Sailboat Company. They make uh, very nice custom sailboats. And um, here we go here. So let's see, I'll put the formula down here. Here it is, very simple. Profit margin on sales, we're just going to take net income divided by sales. That's all we do. So let's figure it out. So let's go right up here. I'm going to split the screen. There we go. Got to love Excel, man. I absolutely love Excel. I, I started doing accounting way back in the old days when before there were really computers. And 
Oh, I'll tell you what, computers are so nice. I love, I, I like spreadsheets. All right, net income. So all we do is get net income and I'm going to put it right up here in this chart. So here we go, net income, 18,250. All I'm doing is taking the bottom line net income numbers right down there. I'm gonna highlight it a little bit. So, okay, in the next year, 130,800, 323,000, and finally, 310,000. There we go. And sales. Sales is also in the income statement, and it's near the top here. And uh, sometimes it's, sales are called revenue. You know, same thing. Sales, revenue, same stuff. So we'll take these numbers right here and transfer them right up here. If you're wondering how I do that, it's um, I already have them typed in, so I'm just getting the print where you can see them. So the uh, profit margin on sales, all we do is divide. There we go, so we got 2%. So what that means is, is for every $1 of sales, the Sunset Sailboat Company is making two pennies, two pennies profit, not much. So let's see if the next year's better. Well, for every $1 of sales, now they're making eight pennies profit. Now that's not bad right there. Let's see what's happening in the third year. 10 uh, 10%. So for every $1 in sales, they're making a 10% profit. So uh, there we are. For every $1 sales, they're making an eight cents profit. So it looks like things are kind of stabilizing about between, you know, eight, 10%. And they, they had a big um, increase here. Well, one thing is that their sales are really increasing. So maybe they're getting uh, economies of scale in their sailboat factory. Now, uh, Sunset Sailboat Company has a competitor, a very close competitor. Now, when you're comparing against competitors, you have to be so careful because there are no two companies that are perfectly matched, all right? So when you compare competitors, just, you know, take it with a grain of salt, as they say. Now, uh, Jack, Captain Jack Sailboats, 5%, um, went up to 6%, 6%, then down to 4%. Now, if I was the management of Captain Jack's sailboats, I'd be really worried about this. And so it appears that the Sunset Sailboat Company has a, a higher profit margin. And by the way, this, um, this net income number, it's used to calculate things like earnings per share. So it's an important number, even though it's a very imperfect number. It's not a great number. All right, so coming down here, let's see what else we have going. Here we go. So what does the profit margin on sales indicate? Well, it measures the bottom line profitability. And, and as I mentioned, that number is used to calculate uh, earnings per share or return on equity, which is the king ratio. And number two, uh, used to calculate earnings per share and return on equity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no problem. A little repetition doesn't hurt. Uh, may not indicate operations profitability accurately, and that's true. It may not, and that's because of the comprehensive income. And I think I've got a little note about comprehensive income coming up. So profit margin on sales might be large or small depending on the specific industry. And I think you're, you'll be surprised um, how small Walmart's uh, profit margin is and how large some of the other companies are. By the way, they did not have a very good 2020 year. So some items don't uh, flow through the income statement, and we call that comprehensive income. That Those are items that, by agreement, the accounting profession has decided, we'll let that do an end run around the income statement and directly into retained earnings. So it's kind of hidden, in my opinion. My strong opinion. <laughs> right. if, I, if I could talk to the person that thought of this... Uh, I would not be real happy. All right, so uh, Walmart, Walmart here. So what's the profit margin on Walmart? Well, it is a whopping 2%. So for every $1 of sales, they make 2% profit. And you might say, or two cents profit. And, and so um, you might think, well, that's not much. That's, you know, two two pennies for every dollar. That, that's not much. Well, Walmart sells a lot. They, they are high volume operation here. And so, uh, you know, 2% of billions and billions of dollars is a lot of money. Southwest Airlines, 
minus 34%. They had a really rough 2020. The, I took the, this information from 2020. And I looked at previous years and their profit margin was positive for previous years. So what this means is, is for every $1 of sales in 2020, they lost 34 cents. And Apple Computer, Apple Computer, uh, 21%. So what this means is for every $1 sales, Apple Computer, their bottom line net income uh, earns 21 cents, which is really, really, really good. That probably explains why Apple Computer stock price is so high. Coors. Coors had a little bit of a rough year too, 2020. <clears throat> so what happened here for every $1 sales, it looks like Coors lost one tenth of a penny. You know, so it, so it is a loss. Um, and you know what? I didn't check their, their previous years, so I don't know how they're, they're normally doing. So anyways, folks, I hope this video helped you out. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit that like button and the subscribe button. That way I'll know that uh, you like the videos and I'll make more of them. And also check out accountingsuperstars.com. It's um, my webpage. I've got all these videos listed by topic, so they're easier for you to find. So until next time, over and out.